Good day, candidates at Upper School. I am Lexi, your Student Council Secretary. And I'm Daphne, your Student Council Treasurer. We would like to welcome you to the question and answer portion of the meeting the Avanza for batch 2021 to 2022. Lexi, I am so excited for this. Are you? Yes, I am, of course. This has always been my favorite part of the elections ever since I entered the upper school. It's always interesting to see their campaigns and plans to improve the school experience for the student body. Let us begin by discussing the rules and guidelines. For all questions, candidates are given 30 seconds of speaking time. The first candidate to answer the question will be given 10 seconds of thinking time before their 30 seconds begin. Keep your eye on the clock, candidates. You will be given exactly 30 seconds to answer the question. We will repeat the question twice to make sure that you have understood the question fully. Please do not forget to unmute your mic when it is your turn. Let's all welcome our candidates once again. Running for grade 10 batch representative, we have Micaela Alagar from 9 Humilitas and Crix Lillian Franco from 9 Humanitas. And for grade 11 batch representative, we have Yaeli Abraham and Linus Ortega. For grade 12 batch rep, we have Edison Feliciano from 11 Freno. For environmental control officer, we have Z Hussein from 11 Castitas. And for public relations officer, we have Hannah Dizon from 11 Freno. For treasurer, we have Isa Perez from also 11 Freno. For the position of secretary, we have our three candidates, Faris Alquiza from Nine Humilitas, Deepan Jali Bish from 11 Castitas, and Bianca Garcia from 11 Frenon. We have two candidates running for vice president. We have Stephanie Leano from 10 Liberalitas and Akisha Mejares from 11 Castitas. And finally, for the position of SC president, we have Ina Mamba from 11 Frenon. We are glad to have you with us today, candidates. To start this question and answer, we will be asking the specifically targeted questions first. This question is to, directed to those running for the batch rep position. We will be starting with the grade 12 batch representative in decreasing order. The question is, what can you do to motivate your batch mates and ask them to actively participate in events, especially if it's not required? Again, what can you do to motivate your batchmates and ask them to actively participate in events, especially if it's not required? All right, so when it comes to motivation, of course, we are bounded that it is really important for us to understand people's feelings because within that feeling, it is, or it is within that will have an impact to one's person. That is why it is important for us to understand what they are feeling within that activity because we need to center around the fact that we engage them through what they are feeling. Thank you very much for that, Edison. Next up, we have Yaeli. Your time starts now. I think what should be done is to get their input as much as possible on what the activity they're going to participate in because the key is to get the activity as, as appealing and relevant to the batch as possible so that they are motivated and they're interested in the um, and in the activity that is being planned for them. And I think also getting them to vote for the activity is also good because the whole, the whole batch can be involved in the decision. Thank you. Then we have Micaela Alagar from grade nine to speak. Your time starts now. Hmm. In terms of motivating people, I think that really like forcing or being pushy with them only serves to well, push them away, of course, or kind of make them resentful of the activity itself. And we don't want that to happen. I feel like um, to make people motivated, we have to make it as welcoming to them as possible. So we have to either give them a, an incentive or B, to give them an open invitation to join us. What I observe with my batch at least, is that only a few like select people joined up. I'm so sorry, Micaela, your time's off. Thank you so much for your answer. Now, can we have Crix? As I see, she has just joined the call. Crix, are you there? Yeah, but I do have technical issues on my camera's end, so I'm sorry I can't turn it on at the moment. That's all right. Um, will you still be able to answer the question? Yes, I can. 
All right, your time starts now. As a batch rep, I would actually have to ask them first on their opinion of the certain activity that is being mentioned and ask them how they would like to go about it. And that is one way that I can support them and give them the boost that they need both positively in emotional wise and physically and academically by consulting their teachers on time given for this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crix. All right, so for the next question, we can have Daphne say the next question. Thank you. All right. Okay. So this next question is directed to everyone. What are your motivations that made you want to campaign for your role in the council? I will repeat it. What are your motivations that made you want to campaign for your role in the council? Let's begin with uh, the student council, the, the person running for student council president, Ina Manda. Your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. Hi, I can actually answer already if that's okay. Sure. <laughs> um, so basically my main motivations as student to be and to run for this position was because I want to be able to kind of mentor the leaders who are going to come after me. Like I've accumulated a lot of knowledge and experience being in this mentorship and being in a variety of different clubs. So I want to be able to pass down what I've learned and to leave the upper school better than when I came here originally. So yeah, that's my main motivation. Thank you so much for your answer, Ina. Up next, we have a vice president candidate. Stephanie Leano, please. All right, so your 30 seconds starts now. So personally, I was very shy of joining it, but I realized how much changes I could make into the student, into upper school. And I believe that if I get the position of being a vice president, I can make those changes. I asked Ina what a vice president does, and she told me that they help with events and a few social media posts and uh, uh, they help the other parts of the student council body, and I would like to be part of that. Thank you very much for maximizing your time, Stephanie. Up next, we have another vice president candidate, Akisha Mejares. Your 30 seconds starts now. So at first, I realized that, in fact, many students have very bright ideas that they haven't been able to share, given that maybe they haven't had the chance to have their voices heard. So. Um, that's the main thing that motivated me to run as the vice president. Also because I want to practice my leadership skills and set a good example for the upper school community. Thank you very much, Akisha. Up next, we have someone running for secretary. Let's have Bianca Garcia go first. You may start. So my main motivation for wanting to run as the secretary of the student council was to um, have a lot, was to bring a lot of bright ideas because amidst the pandemic, I've had a lot of ideas on what we can do to bring um, not only our classes, but our community together. So I'd want to present that to the council. And also I know a lot of people have a lot of bright ideas. So I want to be the voice for them if they can't speak up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bianca. Up next, we have uh, Dia. Can you go next, please? Hi, yes. Um, so I just, I joined, I campaigned for student council because I wanted to be able to connect with the student body more because I don't think I've done that enough. And I had so many different ideas on how to help students based on my past experiences. And this is especially a time where we need to step up and where we need to make as much change as possible because we're all adapting to this environment which is why i just want to help the students with motivation and just make this a much better place than it already is thank you for your very insightful answer dia up next we have faris alkiza your um, time starts now um my main motivations to what were to just make everyone's high school experience more fun and engaging and additionally i want to be your student council secretary because I want to be able to learn and gain the experience and knowledge of a more important role in the MA community that I can implement in my own future. Thank you. Thank you, Faris. Next, we have Isa Perez running for treasurer. 
I want to take action and collaborate with others. My husband, my second home. So I've been in this school for 13 years, almost my entire lifetime. So people I met and continue to bond with have a special place in my heart. And supporting the student body is the best way I can show my gratitude. And I want to show the community that we can also be thankful for the community we have by taking action. Thank you very much, Isa. Up next, we have the current PRO, Hannah Dizon. So I want to create a more socially conscious student body. I personally think we need more exposure to contemporary issues, especially those that concern our country, human rights, and the treatment of smaller groups. I'm honestly tired of students downplaying the severity of things like homophobia, mental health, or misogyny, among other topics. And not only do I want to create an environment where students of all backgrounds feel welcome, I want to help create a student culture that educates ignorance and doesn't tolerate malice. Wow, Hannah, that's a very IRO answer. So proud, so proud. Up next, we have Zihu Tin, running for ECO. Um, I have been a class equal officer for a very long time, and I've done a lot of projects within Teen Scan, Kid Scan that um, was really targeted towards helping the environment. And since a lot of people don't seem to be as urgent as they need to be through environmental issues, I feel like I am. I feel like we should focus more on that and tackle the current issues. I, I was also a student council eco officer this last previous year, and I think um, I should, I can do better than I did. So I also want to do it for self-improvement. Thank you. Thank you very much, C. Next, we have Edison running for grade 12 batch rep. Do you know that feeling when you talk simply to someone and they said that, I'm really thankful because you really brought out the best in me. I want to do that in a bigger scale as a batch rep. And that realization or in fact that I inspired others to do their best because they know they have their potential, that really motivated me to be a batch rep in order to be the one to communicate to other people that they have what it takes to be a leader. Thank you very much for that very inspirational answer, Edison. Up next, we have Yaeli Abraham running for grade 11 batch rep. As we've gone about the school year, we've discovered the hardest parts about this new school experience. And personally, I chose to run because my peers and I have conversed about the opinions we have on the flow of our past batch activities. So with that feedback, I wanted to take on a role that would help me help my peers have a more convenient and organized experience through the through the uh, through the plans I had in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Seeing as Linus has already entered the the, group, uh, the Zoom, can you answer this question right now, or would you like to go after the person that goes next? Um, next, please. Sorry. All right. Okay. So we can go with Crix first. Your time starts now. My motivation to run for this role was to give a voice to people in my batch that don't have a voice and the people that are too shy to give ideas and voice out what they want to be heard because they believe that they're going to get discriminated or judged. And I want to be the example that shows them that they can do it no matter what they are or who they are because uniqueness is a strength. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crix. Um, Linus, can we go back to you now? Okay. Um... Uh, your time starts now. My motivation um, to join, uh, to like campaign for the student council this um, next school year is that I just want to voice out my opinions to, to my batch and see if um, that not only that, like not only people of um, popular would be able to help, but also common people like me will help. So thank you. Thank you, Linus. Up next, we have Mika Aligar. Your time starts now. Well, it goes with saying that as batch rep, I really want to amplify my batch's voices. But I think my motivation runs a bit deeper than that since... Um, because up until me running for batch rep, I think I was basically just one of the batch. I mean, I was secretary of my class, sure, but I still saw myself as one of everyone else. And 
from that perspective, I saw the things that my batch had lacked slash wanted, were through word of mouth or just with my own eyes. And I wanted things to improve. So I thought of some ideas and started running for batch rep. That's basically it. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. Lexi, may you ask the next question? Got it, Daphne. All right. So this question is directed to Edison, who is running for the role of grade 12 batch representative. So the question is, do you have any activities planned for the grade 12 batch that allows them to fully express themselves with their interests and passions? Again, do you have any activities planned for the grade 12 batch that allows them to fully express themselves with their interests and passions? You have 10 seconds of thinking time and it starts now. You may begin if you want to start already. All right. As we do these activities in school, we have mentorships, right? I want to do an activity like a mentorship that is that can be thought of by our, our students as well. Kumbaga, um, a mentorship that is um, circles around what they want besides the mentorships that we have. So there would be like a session wherein one can um, propose a mentorship in order for us to try and we can may consider it within the future to be a mentorship as well. Thank you very much for your answer, Edison. Daphne, you're up. All right. So uh, this question is directed towards the candidates who are running for yet another term. Yes. So um, we have Akisha, Ina, Hannah, and Z. The question is, what would you have done differently? And what can you improve as a student council member if you are reelected in office again? What would you have done differently and how can you improve as a council member if you are re-elected in office? Let's start off with Akisha. Your 10, minute, uh, 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. You may begin to answer if you would like. So having had the experience as the grade 11 batch representative, I mainly hosted like batch recess and um, um, since I'm running as the vice president now, I would like to bring the upper school community together and not just focus on like each of the classes because we all want interconnectedness, especially in this time of learning, especially we are in this virtual setup. So it's very challenging. And I would like to take on that goal and activity. Thank you very much, Akisha. Up next, we have Ina Mamba running for student council president. Hello. So for the most part, I think we all know that we could have done more this past school year. There are a lot of amazing projects that were proposed that I think didn't get to realize their full potential. Like I wish we could have um, continued more with our educational campaigns and made it more of a consistent thing. And I hope that's something that happens next year. And of course, I also wish I went out of my comfort zone last year and attempted to do things like host events and the like, just so I can get a feel for how that's like and also be more involved with the student body. So that's for the most part my answer. Thank you very much, Ina. Up next, we have Hannah Dizon, running for PRO. Similar to Ina, I honestly wish that we did more advocacy posts, like for example, our anti-terror bill post, which is one of our most well-received ones. Um, I think the student body finds those extremely relevant and important. So it would be great to use our platform to spread information that can help build the leaders of our future. Thank you very much, Hannah. Up next, we have Z Hussein running for ECO. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing a lot of things differently this year because if I'm going to be honest, I didn't really do too much last year that really stood out and really showed me as a eco officer. So I do want to do things differently. I want to have an actual impact this time with, you know, projects like the potato project. Um, I'm going to be promoting Ecosia more. And I'm going to be trying to make good looking trivia posts about the environment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your answers, candidates. We will truly miss being with you in the student council. Up next, Lexi, can you ask the next question, please? Yes, I will also miss everyone. It's really sad. I can't believe we're graduating. Okay. So this next question is for all the candidates. And the question is, 
There will always be students who don't want to participate. How will you achieve interconnectedness if the student body is hesitant? Again, there will always be students who do not want to participate. How will you really achieve interconnectedness if the student body is hesitant? So since in the last question that was directed to everyone, we started with the president, let's start in the opposite order by starting with the grade 10 batch rep. So Mika, your 10 seconds thinking time starts now. You may begin. I feel like one of the, the reasons why certain students don't want to participate is because sometimes they are honestly treated like, oh, they're, they're the problem. But I feel like maybe we should also see why they're acting out like that. Like if there's any other reasons, maybe lack of motivation, maybe something else. I feel like we should focus more on that and not the fact that they're an issue. That's all. Thank you. I agree. Thank you so much for that answer, Mika. Up next, we have Crix. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm sorry for that. But my best way to communicate with these students is to be able to ask them why or what their problem is, if they have problems at home during academics, emotionally, mentally, and to make sure that they're confident and boost their confidence and encourage them the best way I can to be able to promote unity and to promote batch pride and to be able to show that I am not just your typical batch rep. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crix. Up next, we have the candidates for grade 11 batch representative. Let us first start with Yaeli Abraham. Your time starts now. I feel like the first thing we should do is understand their emotions and their different capacities to um, being comfortable um, talking around new people, especially since it's virtual and it's hard to really approach people if you don't put yourself to it. And the next thing we can do is encourage them because um, in my past experience, like in, in this virtual setting, I've been able to connect to people who I never really thought I would connect to, like if it was just a group work. So encourage them that you can find comfort in anyone out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yaeli. Up next, we have Linus Ortega. Your time starts now. I think for me to um, achieve interconnectedness to the short student body that feel that they are, they doubt themselves about joining is that, that to motivate them, of course, um, motivate them by leading a good example that, oh, um, I'm here for you, don't worry, don't always um, worry about um, things that are so small. So motivating them is a good help. Thank you. Thank you, Linus, for your answer. Up next, we have Edison running for grade 12 batch rep. Your time starts now. How about if I ask you, you should do this, you should like this on the spot. Would you like that without even knowing what is the real purpose within this? Of course you won't, because if, they do, if you cannot change them abruptly, maybe it is you, the one who can understand better, could change. In order to really motivate them, to something that you want them to do. Thank you so much for that impactful communication. Love it. Okay, next we have Z, who's running for ECO. Your time starts now. Um, there are a number of reasons as to why students wouldn't participate in um, specific events. One of the main reasons being laziness, because you know they don't feel that they really need to participate in such events. Or in the best case scenario, they're just skipping events to do more homework. Or, well, the, the way we can motivate people is to make them want to, specifically with benefits or rewards or anything that will make them want to participate for a greater benefit. Thank you. Thank you for that very realistic answer, Z. <laughs> Up next, we have Hannah running for PRO. Your time starts now. I think some people have this mindset that they don't have anything to contribute to events when actually there are every event we do as a class is very multifaceted and covers a lot of uh, a lo covers a lot of things we need to do. So I think we should encourage uh, in every event the several things that need to be done and the several ways people can apply their smarts so that everyone can have a task and feel important while doing while participating. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hannah. That's really I agree. Okay, 
Next, we have the candidates running for, um, we have the candidates, sorry, running for treasurer, Isa Perez. Your time starts now. Uh, this statement, I don't want to, stems from, I don't feel like it or understand. We need to go to the root cause of their feeling by sharing its positive impact or understanding them. They need an open ear and mind. This way we can come to an agreement. If they know someone has their back and there is something to look forward to, they'll be willing to participate. Thank you so much, Isa. Now we have the candidates running for a secretary, sorry. Let's first start with Faris Alkiza. Your time starts now. It's our jobs as leaders to make activities more comfortable and engaging for the students. We should, get, we should get insight or information on how students feel about the activities we already have now. This circles back to one of my ideas, which is the design thinking process box. This would give the students a reason to give feedback on the activities on the activities we already have now, so the council can take that feedback to make our school activities to be more engaging and motivational. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faris. Up next, we have Dia Bisht. Your time starts now. I think how we can motivate students to join programs and projects is by understanding why they don't want to join and reaching out to them because I know so many different students who have so many brilliant ideas to contribute but they feel too shy to do so. So I feel like if we reach out to them first and if we try to try engaging with them then they will automatically feel a connection and they would want to join. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dia. Up next, we have Bianca Garcia. Your time starts now. I feel like um, we should be motivating people through making them feel included and heard. Um, the reason why people don't participate is because one, it doesn't interest them, or two, why should they care about it? I feel like we should be consulting more with our student body, let them air out what's burdening them, but also take into account their interests. Um, we should be listening to what the student body's interests are and applying it to future events. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bianca. Now we have the candidates running for vice president. Let's first start with Akisha Meharis. Your time starts now. So some students may want to participate, some may don't, may not want to at times. And I think it boils down to them not being interested, them not being used to contributing as much. So with that, we can work towards understanding them in their perspectives. And once we do understand their thoughts, we can be their partners in achieving interconnectedness throughout the student body to take into account all their ideas and make it a reality. Thank you so much, Akisha. Up next, we have from grade 10, Stephanie Liamio. Your time starts now. I believe the majority of the reasons why people don't join events is because they're lazy or they feel like there's really no point in doing this. So I think that we should use the technique technique of pathos and using their feelings to make them want to join. Specifically, letting them know that high school only happens once. So all these events that will happen will only occur once. And if the events that we will be giving will not be something that you want to miss. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Lastly, we have to answer this question, Ina Mamba, who's running for president. Your time starts now. So my answer is quite similar to the ideas expressed by the batch apps in regards to increasing participation in events. I think to achieve interconnectedness and active participation among the student body, we really need to cater events and activities to the interest of a particular batch. I think it goes the same way with compliance, making activity more relevant and suited to their skills and interests will increase people's effort. For some, they much prefer creative projects. So to promote interconnectedness, we can make it a more creative outlet so that they are able to utilize their already realized interest when it comes to dealing with something unfamiliar. Thank you so much, Ida. You spoke really fast, but I love it. Info packed. Great job. Daphne, you're up. I would just like to say that high school really does happen very short, so short. All right. So this question is actually also directed to Ina. How do you monitor the performance of the people that you have to lead? Again, how do you monitor the performance of the people that you have to lead? Your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. Um, in general, I think I'm quite a communicative leader. Every time I set particular deadlines for people and in the beginning of projects, I try to establish my 
um, my timeline and kind of expectations for a particular project. So I tend to be quite communicative with my um, comments and see if they're actually completing their work and if it's on time with our timeline and schedule. And based on that, it's pretty easy to monitor how much we've done and the progress. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for that answer, Ina. Love the wrapping skills. Lexi? Okay, so the next question is, who inspired you to run for vice president? Again, who inspired you to run for vice president? This is obviously directed towards the candidates running for vice president. So um, let us start with Stephanie. You have 10 seconds to think. Your time to think starts now. May I start? Go ahead. So actually, fun fact, the current secretary and president asked me if I wanted to run. And that kind of got me the motivation to think, that, oh my gosh, they think that I, have, that I have the capability to actually be a vice president. And ever since that, I started asking a few student council members, such as Ina, and she told me about her experience with being a vice president and the events and activities that she helps with. And that kind of motivated me to want to make a change for, my, from, for the upper school. That is why I want to run as vice president. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And yes, I believe that you can make a difference. Next up, we have Akisha Meharis. Your time starts now. So initially last year, I actually planned to run, run for a class representative to you know, more or less ground myself and get used to the council because this is my first time last year being in a council in upper school. So, you know, this year, since it's gonna be my last year, you know, senior year, it's scary. I wanted to make the most out of my experience in the council to run for the vice president because I believe that even though it may be more challenging, I can take on that challenge and hopefully achieve my goals for myself and the school. Thank you very much, Akisha. And yes, this is going to be your last year and I am proud of you for going and making this decision to run. So um, Daphne, you're up for the next question. All right, so up next, we have a question directed to Faris Alkiza. Your suggestion box idea has actually been implemented twice in the past, but was not used by the students. If SC were to implement it again, how would you ensure that it will be used this time? Again, your suggestion box idea has actually been implemented twice in the past, but was not used by the students. If SC were to implement it again, how would you ensure that it will be used this time? Your 10, sec your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. You may begin. Um, being part of the student body, um, I actually haven't, I wasn't even, I wasn't advised on that there was a suggestion box in MI. So I think that's one of the reasons why it wasn't being used. So what I do, I'd um, partner up with the, I'd coordinate with the phronesis or with the council social media. And I'd, um, I'd give this idea, I put it in front of the students so they'd know that there is a suggestion box. Thank you very much, Paris. Lexi? All right, so the next question is directed towards the candidate running for treasurer, Isa Perez. What is the most challenging part of budgeting for you? Again, what is the most challenging part of budgeting for you? Your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. I well, may I start? I think the most challenging part when it comes to budgeting is having like a certain goal. So like if we want to reach a certain goal, it means we need to, we want to help a number of people. So maybe we can keep things realistic and also try our best to look for like the right partners in order to um, reach our goal so we can help more people. Thank you very much, Isa. Now for the next question. All right, this question is directed to our ECO officer, Z. Apparently, your suggestion of a potato corner prize has intrigued a lot of students. The question is, 
you mentioned Potato Corner as a prize for your project. How do you plan to fund this? Again, you mentioned Potato Corner as a prize for your project. How do you plan to fund this? Your 10, 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. You may begin. Oh, um, okay. So when I thought of the when I initially thought of this project, I did take into account that the SC treasurer might be stressed out with this idea. But so I decided that I'll genuinely just use my own pocket money because I think this is a project that deems something that worthy because I'm not using my money too much anyway this quarantine. So I might as well do it for a good cause. Thank you. Thank you very much for that very noble answer, Z. Next question. Yes, indeed. Very noble. I love it. Okay. This is directed towards those running for my position of secretary. Why do you think being on time is an important characteristic of a leader? Again, why do you think being on time is an important characteristic of a leader? This is directed towards Faris, Dia, and Bianca. Now let's start with Bianca Garcia. Your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. You may begin. So I believe being on time is a part of characteristics of a leader because it shows that you cared not only about the time that you put into the project, but also your um, team's time. Because um, planning out, organizing, and fleshing out uh, ideas and programs does take time. So you might want to utilize um, all the time that you need um, as much as possible to get as much as things as much as many things done as soon as possible with your team. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and I agree. Now let's have Dia Bisht. Your time starts now. I believe that being on time shows respect for the person receiving your work or wherever you're showing up, being on time shows that you respect the person, that you care for the person. It also helps you stay organized and shows that you can manage your time and you're good at management. And, and honestly, when you're not on time, it keeps stressing you out that, oh, I should have done that. Oh, I should have reached there early. So it just leaves, it makes, it's a better for you and the other person. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let's have Faris. Your 30 seconds starts now. Um, being on time, it shows that you are passionate. It shows that you respect, that you respect your decision on, for example, being a leader. And it shows that you're organized. Um, additionally, um, it's so that you wouldn't be stressed out, so things, so you won't be falling behind, or so that things don't pile up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Daphne, you're up. All right, so this next question is actually directed towards Dia. What makes you qualified to host a mentorship to help students for college admissions? Again, what makes you qualified to host a mentorship to help students for college admissions? Your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now. Can I start now, actually? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm currently a grade 11 student, and I very recently started the whole college admissions process, and it is tiresome. And I have, in these past few months, I've reached out to so many different students. Shout out to Lexi and so many different alumni of MI, and everybody has been so helpful and so willing. So hosting a mentorship like this, I will, they have everybody so eager to help and I won't be doing it alone. So I just want to help people as much as I can within my power. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dia. Lexi? All right, so we have our next question for all the candidates. What are your weaknesses and how can it affect your work and student council or the student body? Again, what are your weaknesses and how can it affect your work and student council or the student body as a whole? Now let's start with Ina Mamba, who's running for president. Your 10 seconds of thinking time starts now, but if you want to start and go ahead, just do it. <laughs> Hi, so I'm quite a paranoid person and somebody who has a very particular vision about certain things. So sometimes that conflicts with other people. So 
yeah, that's something I'm constantly working on, of course. And there are times when it slows the progress of something going into fruition because I can have like a very tedious process where I examine all the details again and again to make sure that it's just right. So yeah, of course, it can slow down the process. And of course, that affects the other people that I work with. But that's something I'm constantly trying to work at and grow from. So. Thank you very much, Ina. Now, let's have the vice president candidates. Let's start with Stephanie Liano. Your 30 seconds of speaking time starts now. Personally, I am a person who overthinks a lot of things. And I think that if I overthink that I can't possibly, I can't do something, I would affect the way that I, the projects that I give to the student council, which is something I don't want to do, but sometimes it's inevitable because I overthink a lot. But I, I am trying to believe in myself a lot more. And just a simple step of running as vice president already started that. So yeah. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Now let's have Akisha Maharis. Your 30 seconds starts now. Well, honestly, I'd say that I've always been an overthinker, not just like related to school things. But in regards to this one, I think that when it comes to overthinking, I tend to um, just magnify every details of my works. And then um, from that, I could possibly delay it, though I try not to. But then that could be an obstacle I may face and that would hinder my performance for the council and the student body. Thank you so much. I see that a lot of us are overthinkers. I am the same, so you're not alone. Okay, the next candidate, let's have Bianca Garcia, who's running for secretary. Your 30 seconds starts now. Okay, I think I have the same issue with everyone else here is that I have the tendency to overthink. I tend to look too far into the future and forget what is happening right now. I think this will affect um, the student council and the student body because I keep pushing to get things done right here, right now, as soon as possible. So it might stress out the council members and the student body, but I am trying to work on focusing on what's due as close as possible and not to think too far ahead into the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bianca. Let's have Dia Bish next. Your 30 seconds starts now. Honestly, um, I stress out a lot over the littlest things. So when I'm putting forth a project or an idea, I feel so scared about what others might think, which I think is the same thing as overthinking, just a different way of saying it. So I think it definitely stops me from giving up my best work, but this is something I really wanna work on because it hinders me from being the best version of myself anyway. So I think I can work upon this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dia. Up next, we have Faris. Your 30 seconds starts now. Honestly, one of my weaknesses is that I procrastinate a lot. Everyone does, but it's been happening a lot less now because I instated a personal system when I entered high school. I have calendars, daily and hourly reminders that keep me from dozing off on TikTok. I now like to think ahead and prioritize group projects because it affects other people. Thank you. I agree, Sam. I do also prioritize group projects. Okay, now let's have Isa Paris, who's running for treasurer. Your 30 seconds starts now. Um, I'm, I'm shy, <laughs> an introvert. So this meeting, the Vance, honestly makes my intestines go around. But what's most important is that I try to grow and you see me trying right now. Although the ability to stay quiet seems negative, but this also allows me to listen to others and reflect on what's most important. Thank you so much, Isa. I am very proud of you for taking the step forward. Um, next, let's have Hannah Dizon, who's running for PRO. Your 30 seconds starts now. To be completely honest, sometimes I struggle with communication. I worry if my messages come off as too aggressive or if I'm misinterpreting things from other people. And at some point, it came to a standstill where I was just too afraid to clarify anything. But I'm honestly glad to say that I've grown from that honestly overthinking mindset. And I'm more open to getting help and understanding things from people now. I think I still need to work on it, but you know, progress is not the linear thing and we'll always keep growing. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. And yes, I believe that once all of you guys are in council, you guys will grow together and that's what matters. Um, next, let's have Z who's running for ECO. Your 30 seconds starts now. Uh, I think the perfect word to describe the weaknesses that I have um, is inconsistent. Um, I could I could say something like, oh, I work too hard as my weakness, but even that something like that is inconsistent. When it comes to communication, someone could message me and one day I might respond within the minute they send me a message or I'll take an entire week, which I know something like that is going to annoy a lot of people, which I will try to work on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your honest answer, Z. Now let's have Edison, who's running for grade 12 batch rep. Your 30 seconds starts now. As someone who really cares about other people's feelings, um, one of my weaknesses is um, really overthinking of maybe uh, I might have hurt someone or I might have um, kumbaga affected someone in a way that I really don't like them to experience because I really want to be the person who has really a positive impact to other people. So maybe I could work on that within the future. Thank you so much, Edison. Up next, let's have Linus Ortega, who's running for a grade 11 batch rep. Your time starts now. Well, I think, yeah, mostly what um, the other candidates have said about overthinking. But for me, I like instead of the future, I tend to overthink of my past because I really don't, I really doubt myself in saying, oh, I should have done this in the past than doing this. But coming to realize that, oh, I should appreciate more so that I get to know myself more and I grow up as a person I am today. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linus. Up next, let's have you, Ellie. Your 30 seconds starts now. I think my confidence in what I do is what I should improve because like many of the other candidates, it ends up affecting, um, it makes me overthink about my decisions and it causes me to be more skeptical about what I'm about to do. Um, and I think this affects me and my um, the people around me because it tends to put us on edge. But in the end, what's the, the good thing about it is that it prepares us for the worst that could happen in the future. So it um, helps us be more prepared for the future situations that we could be having problems with. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Yali. Um, now let's go to the grade 10 batch rep candidates. Let's start with Crix. Your 30 seconds starts now. I believe my biggest weakness is also overthinking along with being afraid to affect someone's feelings as well, because I believe that sometimes I come off as very intimidating or I come off as sometimes too over controlling as because that I want to be the voice that people um, would like to trust, but sometimes that comes off wrong. And I would like to work on that attitude as well as not doubting myself and what I can do to help others as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crix. Lastly, let's have Mika, your 30 seconds. Okay, so in all honesty, one of the reasons I was hesitant in running is that I don't have a lot of experience in terms of leadership positions, well, not as much as everyone else here at least. And in fact, I've only gotten the chance to be an officer this year in being 9B secretary. So that may mean I don't know how to do certain things, but I'm really eager to learn to be the best possible batch rep my batch can have. Plus, I think it gives me the perspective that not that a ton of people have, but just they don't really have any leadership experience. Thank you so much, Rika. Now let's go on to our last question. Daphne, go ahead. All right. So our very last question is directed towards everyone. What is the most pressing problem with the school or your community or your class or whatever <laughs> faces right now? And how do you plan on fixing it again? What is the most pressing problem that the school, your community, your class, or whatever faces right now? And how do you plan on fixing it? Since we started with the president, we'll start with the grade 10 batch rep first. Uh, let's start with Crix. You have 10 seconds of thinking time. Starts now. OK. I'd like to start now. All right. So the most pressing issue that I believe is discrimination or a culture of mindset that has discrimination in it, in the sense that people judge looks, people judge attitude, people judge voice, people judge a person for just being happy or just a person being a person. And this is a way that I would like 
to fix it is by giving them words of affirmation, which is my love language. And I would like to show them that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel and that no matter what they're going through, they can always go through it because I did it too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crix. Up next, we have Mika Aligar. Aligar, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. So, wait. So one of the issues I think is that not a lot of people get to connect easily, especially during the online setting. Like this isn't just apply to batch. It applies to like all the grade levels because in all honesty, not a ton of people know the people above us or below us, I think. And that's why, that's honestly one of the, like the cornerstones of my campaign. I want to bridge everyone together the with the batch uses idea, with the MI design merge idea. But basically, yeah, not being able to can, like, can force isolation and such. Thank you very much, Mika. Up next, we have Linus Ortega. Your 30 seconds starts now. I think for me, it would be like um, self analyzation. Like, they, some people don't realize what kind of mistakes they're doing. Like, if they're discriminating, if they're um, hating on the wrong person, they don't give a chance to others and stuff. I, for me, I would like to give. Um, like a small but um, short crash course in um, the seven habits for me because I personally love the seven habits because I was part of a workshop also before and it really helped me um, analyze myself, self-analyze myself. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Linus. I actually don't know what the seven habits are. Uh, up next, we have Yaeli Abraham. I think the entire community is just very disconnected, not just because of this um, virtual setup, but also because of their dif the different opinions that we all share. Um, I think one way I want to address this is by encouraging open invitations to any type of recreational activity like gaming, for example, because I feel like if students can first make a connection, um, it will open a gateway to them being able to discuss their opinions in a more civilized manner without being too stubborn or defensive about their different stances. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Up next, we have Edison Feliciano running for grade 12 batch rep. Your 30 seconds starts now. Do you know the magic word that is really, um, you often hear from teachers, it's compliance, right? <laughs> compliance is one of the main problems that we are facing. But of course, rather than stressing out, of course, it's not only from the teachers, but also from the students as well. I hope we um, have the uh, initiative to help them understand them and not just whine on them in order for us to help each other to succeed within the school. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edison. Up next, we have the ECO. Z. Your 30 seconds starts now. There are a lot of pressing, uh, sorry, there are a lot of pressing issues that are currently going on right now, but I'll give an answer that fits the position I'm running for. Um, I believe that the online environment has really hindered a lot of efforts to um, help the environment right now. And there are a lot of scientists and researchers that are saying that humanity will crumble in 2050, which is a lot closer than some of us think. So I don't think being stuck at home is really an excuse to not work. And I think um, we should do more. Thank you. Thank you very much, C. Up next, we have Hannah Dizon running for PRO. Your 30 seconds starts now. I think something that's at the root of everyone's concern is our mental health because, you know, our mental health can make us feel like we're not deserving of good grades, so we lose motivation, or it makes us feel like we're not deserving of friendship, so we don't reach out to other people. So I personally think that we should keep pushing the, um, student wellness desk and other student resources for mental health this year to help people cope with the pandemic independently. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah. Next, we have our candidate running for treasurer, Isa Perez. The 30 seconds starts now. Um, I think the pressing problem we have now is um, stability and sanity. Our class, I mean, no one, even our teachers are not used to this set of no person is alone, but sometimes we forget or at least feel support exists. Um, even the WHO mentioned that 
the pandemic increased the need for mental health. That is the very reason why I wanted to focus on making positive connections. And this way, when the mind is well, we can succeed more on academics and personal aspects. All right, thank you, Isa. Uh, next, we have the candidates running for secretary. Let's start with Faris Alkiza. Your 30 seconds starts now. I feel like this is a problem for the whole world. A problem I want to address, not fix, because I know my limitations and this is a problem I can't fix by myself alone. This problem is discrimination from your race, sexual orientation, or gender identity. To address this, I may apply, I may want, I may want to start an, an MI Gay Straight Alliance or GSA, where I or a mentor would educate the students on how to respect each other, whether being queer or being part of a culture that is being discriminated. Thank you for addressing a very pressing issue of today. Up next, we have Dia Bisht. Yeah, your 30 seconds starts now. Problem a lot of students are facing these days are lack of communication and lack of concentration, and this is because they have no motivation. I want to be able to reach out to the students and hear out their ideas on how, what they would want to do and what would make them feel motivated, and then work with the other members of the council to try and help solve this problem by using different solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Dia. Next, we have Bianca Garcia. Your 30 seconds starts now. Okay. Um, a, a pressing problem that's happening is the lack of social awareness. And to address that, I talked about a fundraising group in my video that would raise funds for different causes. And I also mentioned doing highlights of social issues on the student council so social media pages. We have a lot of talks about being global citizens, and it's more than just being a leader. It's about, it means being socially aware and present. So it's time to put our words into action and show people what a true global citizen are and can be. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. You are so right. We should be walking our talk. Up next, we have the vice president candidates. Let's start with Akisha Mejares. The 30 seconds starts now. So the two issues that are usually brought to light towards the end of the quarter would be compliance and collaboration. And I think that this virtual setup has definitely hindered us from like speaking up or finding the motivation to um, have that mindset to get up and work. So I would like to speak to the students about their problems and deal with the root cause, as well as host activities that would involve everyone and encourage them to take part in it and to foster partnership between the students and for them to be placed in wellness groups to create a connection between them. Another candidate running for Student Council Vice President, Stephanie Leano. Your 30 seconds starts now. An issue that I can see within my community is the lack of motivation. And I think that I can solve that simply by connecting the activities that we have to make them do through their interests, such as esports, music, or art. An example of this is when Sir George made us do our own out outputs. We had to choose between writing a song, making, uh, drawing an art, or making an essay. And we what and I think that allows us to express ourselves, and it motivated us to make us want to do it. Which is why I think we should do that for every activity in the upper school. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Last but not the least. Our candidate running for student council president, Ina Mamba. Your 30 seconds starts now. So I agree with what the candidates before me said. I think with this online platform, it has made it really easy for a lot of people to feel disconnected. And with the distance and time apart, bonds between grade levels have weakened. And some are not even given the opportunity to interact with those outside their grade levels. So I want to help aid this by giving individuals more opportunities to connect by means of games, mentor and mentee events, and particularly in regards to mental health and feelings of isolation. I want to emphasize student wellness, which can be done through how I plan to have SE be a very vocal advocate for our upcoming peer counseling project. <laughs> On the street, Ina. Thank you very much for your answers. So that is the last question. Lexi? Thank you very much, everyone, for coming to this event. Again, I would like to encourage everyone who watches this to use your vote wisely. It is your vote and it is your voice. And our elections are on May 3, 2021. We hope that this Q&A really helped you make your decision. And these are our social media accounts. Don't forget to follow us on MIIS US Student Council on Facebook and at MIIS underscore SC on Instagram. And you can email us if you have any questions, MIIS underscore SC at mischool.edu.ph.
Thank you so much for watching this Q&A session.